Good morning. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. This is a day that the Lord hath made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Let us enter in silence, linger in prayer, and depart to serve. It is a blessing to be in the Lord's house once again. We thank God for this uh, a wonderful blessing to enter his house. We have uh, uh, some beloved uh, saints here to support uh, today's message. And we are glad that you are here. To our visitors, we welcome you to the First Baptist Church of South Euclid worship service. And uh, I have a few announcements. Uh, but before the announcements, I always like to uh, uh, have a reading. And the reading today comes by way of the Apostles' Code by O.S. Hawkins. And he says something very powerful and profound. Where is the evidence that we are being filled with the spirit of the living God? Some say the proof is found in certain gifts of the spirit that we may be supernaturally enabled to perform. Yet we can read even the lengthiest passage about the gifts, 1 Corinthians 12 and through chapter 14, and not find a syllable, much less a verse, about gifts being an indicator of being filled with the spirit. The gifts of the Spirit are not a sign of spiritual maturity. In fact, Paul wrote to these same Corinthian believers saying he could not speak to them as to spiritual people, but as to carnal, as to babes in Christ, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 1. The more we know our Bible, the more we understand the importance of context. Thus, the proof of God's fullness in a life is found in the very context of his command for us to be filled with with the Spirit, Ephesians 5, verse 18. There is no period at the end of the verse 18, but rather a comma, with the next three verses offering the evidence of God's fullness in our lives. First, there is the inward evidence. We have a song in our hearts as we sing and make melody in our hearts to the Lord, verse 19. Then there is the upward evidence of an attitude of gratitude, giving thanks always to God, verse 20. Finally, there is the outward evidence found in the fact that we are submitting to one another, verse 21. These, not supernatural gifts, are the proof of the Spirit-filled life. And the cold word that O.S. Hawkins puts is proof. Today, when you need to prove a point about something, remember that the proof of God's Spirit filling you is seen in the song in your heart, your attitude of thanksgiving, and your submissive spirit. To others. That is an encouraging word this morning. And uh, we would like to meet the Lord in prayer as we start today's service. Most gracious and eternal Father, we love you. But we acknowledge that that love flows from an enduring, dying love that you are a purpose for mankind. Even before you said, let there be light, you had purposed a lamb without spot and without blemish for our soul salvation. None are worthy, Father God, but oh, worthy, worthy is the Lamb that was slain from the foundations of the earth. And dear Lord, uh, as we meet you uh, in worship today, we pray, dear Lord, that uh, you would hide us and that uh, uh, we would open up in the fullness of worship and that uh, uh, we would worship you in the beauty of holiness, that uh, if you find anything like sin, we ask that you would purge it, convict us of it, uh, and, and when we confess it, Father God, bring us back fully into your worship, into your loving care, into your kindness. We, we just thank you, Father God. You're such a good God. You're such a God of great mercy and grace. You're such a God of patience with us. We thank you, Father God, even at a time like this, uh, we are praying uh, for our nation, we are praying for our city, we are praying for our church. And Father God, I pray if there's anybody today who does not know Christ as their personal Savior, that this might be the hour of salvation. We thank you, and we thank you because you are faithful. It is in Jesus' mighty, matchless name we do pray. And God's children said, Amen. We have uh, uh, several announcements before we go into uh, altar call. Uh, the church services are suspended until further notice. I prayerfully am asking the Lord to let us know when to open his house. And I I'm getting excited. I believe that the Lord will bless us to open his house uh, uh, soon. Uh, until then, uh, we have only two exceptions. Uh, our Wednesday morning prayer meeting at 7 o'clock uh, and our Wednesday evening 
evening sermon taping, which begins at 5.30. We invite the First Baptist Church to come. We have set up social distancing spots. We all have also set up the fellowship hall, so there is plenty good room. I, I believe we can hold comfortably and abiding in uh, uh, distancing protocol 60 members. So members of the First Baptist Church of South Euclid, if you want to come and worship with us on Wednesdays, 530, uh, uh, there is plenty good room. Also, uh, uh, Saturday, we are doing exterior cleanup and maintenance. That begins on Saturday mornings from 9 to 11. All are welcome uh, as we uh, attempt and uh, uh, are charged to beautify God's sacred ground. The Experiencing the Heart of Jesus workshop has begun, and we're excited. We are in week number one, and to all of those experiencing the Heart of Jesus workshop, uh, 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 we are just privileged to uh, uh, go into this uh, study. And if you are a part of our Sunday school, new quarterly Sunday school books are available. Contact either Deacon McGee or our historian uh, Barbara Bailey. And our Annie Armstrong Easter offering goal, which is $1,400. Annie Armstrong Easter offering goes toward missionary work throughout the entire world. Uh, we have set a goal of $1,400. Uh, we are blessed. We are at $1,120.50. Keep uh, designating on your tithes and offerings the Annie Armstrong that we meet our goal. And we thank you in advance for meeting that goal. And we thank you for your benevolence and your giving. Uh, uh, your giving, uh, your tithes and offerings, and the Faith Walk Center and Annie Armstrong can be mailed or by way of PayPal, or you can drop them off at the church. We, we thank this church who is uh, comprised of generous, cheerful givers. Also, uh, the Girl Scout Troop 70120 will be hosting a drive through cookie pickup on Saturday, June 20th, that is next Saturday, from 9.30 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. here at the church for anyone who placed an order. And this will be the only time they're able to distribute cookies before the council deadline. Any cookies not picked up will be donated to the frontline responders, and the troop will be going off the honor system and memory for your orders. If you have placed an order, we hope to see you up here next Saturday, 9.30 to 10.30. It is altar call time. It is a special time in God's house when we, the body of Christ, meet the Lord in prayer. He is a God of great grace and great mercy. He loves to hear from us, and we just love talking to him because he is such a gracious, loving God. Uh, we are praying for the bereaving who have lost loved ones to the COVID-19 pandemic. We continue to pray for our hospital employees, doctors, nurses, and staff. We pray for our first responders, police, fire, EMS. We are praying for our hospice workers and their patients, the VA hospital workers, our veterans and residents of the VA hospital. We're praying for our correctional facilities throughout the United States and the convicts and uh, uh, security that work there. We are praying for our meat packing plants throughout the nation. Pray for our federal, state, <clears throat> regional, and city officials for godly decisions and protocols. Pray for the safety of our protesters, the safety of the police, and the safety of property. Continue, beloved, to pray for our trustee, Dorothy Blake. Uh, Cindy Prioreshi has asked us to pray for her and her sister, Vicki and Deborah. We are praying for Carmela Fletcher, uh, Brother Bob's wife and his daughter, Marie. We are praying for Brittany, who was hospitalized with a blood clot in her lung, and we are praying that uh, uh, that is dissolved and she can go home safely. We also ask you to pray for Catherine Livis and Paulette McCall, that is Sister Gwen's mother and sister. Pray for our widows. Pray for our children during these summer months. Pray for the observance of physical distancing and hygienic protocols where possible. Pray for an antidote for the COVID-19 virus. Pray against the surge in the COVID cases after weeks of protest. And continue, beloved, to pray for truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. We are praying for the Jabez uh, property at 4790 Monticello Boulevard. Continue to pray for the Faith Walk Center. And we are praying for Carol, who is uh, uh, suffering from some surgery complications. We're praying for Pat, who was uh, 
going through radiation treatment for cancer, and we also are praying for Darcel at the passing of her husband to the COVID virus. Let us meet the Lord in prayer this morning. Most gracious and eternal Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of Christ Jesus, our Lord. And we come to you, Father God, and before we would ask you for anything, we thank you for all things. We thank you for this day. We thank you for last night's providence and protection. We thank you for your precious promises. And dear Lord, uh, uh, so many uh, prayers are to petition to you, dear Lord. We are praying uh, uh, mightily for our hospital employees, uh, the doctors and nurses, as the COVID virus is spiking once again, dear Lord. Uh, we're praying for the bereaved who have lost loved ones to this virus. And we pray for our first responders. We pray, dear Lord, for hospice workers, veteran hospital workers. We pray for our correctional facilities and our meatpacking plants. We pray, dear Lord, uh, uh, for our protocols, that uh, we would abide in the protocols set up and that we would be mindful of social distancing, mindful of wearing our masks, out of respect for those around us. And I pray, dear Lord, uh, for the safety of the protesters. I pray, dear Lord, for the safety of property. And I pray, dear Lord, for the safety of police. Uh, we are praying for uh, our trustee, uh, Dorothy Blake, and we hold up to you, Father God, Cindy Priyareshi and her sisters. Uh, we are praying for uh, Carol as she goes through a surgical complication. Uh, we hold up Darcel at the passing of her husband, and we hold up Pat, who is going through radiation treatment. And Father God, uh, we hold up our widows and uh, a very special prayer for Brittany, who was hospitalized with a blood clot in her lungs. Uh, we are praying for uh, Sister Catherine Livis and Paulette McCall, uh, and we pray, dear Lord, uh, uh, for our children, especially during these summer months. And as the heat uh, uh, increases, Father God, we are praying for those who uh, suffer from respiratory ailments, COPD and asthma and bronchitis. Uh, we pray, dear Lord, that you would alleviate some of their uh, suffering as they uh, uh, attempt to breathe a as fully as they can. And we are praying against a surge in the COVID uh, cases after the weeks of protests. And Father God, we want to take opportunity to pray for a uh, dear neighbor down the street, Dan, who has uh, Lou Gehrig's disease. We pray for uh, him and we pray for his wife and his two uh, sons as well, that your hand of grace would be on them. And Father God, we pray for a word to encourage us this day. And we just thank you, Father God. We thank you for the privilege of being in your house. And we await that day when you say, uh, uh, it is time to open my house and that all might come in safely and that uh, we might worship you in spirit and truth. Truly, dear Lord, the day we come back in your house, we can all say and say of a truth, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Till that day we wait, we pray, we watch, and we trust you, Father God. No other help we know. And we ask this prayer in the mighty, matchless name of our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus. For his sake we do pray. And God's children said, Amen. Amen. God bless. There is a word from the Lord. If you have your Bibles, turn with me, please, to the book of Luke. Luke chapter 15, a very familiar text. Luke 15, we're going to read verses 1 and 2. Then drew near unto him all the publicans and sinners for to hear him. And the Pharisees and scribes murmured, saying, This man receives sinners and eats with them. Verses 11 through 13. And he said a certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country and there wasted his substance with riotous living. Verses 25 through 31. Now his elder son was in the field, and as he came and drew near to the house, he heard music and dancing. And he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. And he said unto him, your brother is come, and your father has killed the fatted calf because he has received him safe and sound. And he, the older brother, was angry and would not go in. Therefore came out his father and entreated him. 
And he answering said to his father, Lo, these many years do I serve thee, neither transgressed I at any time thy commandment, and yet thou never gavest me a kid that I might make merry with my friends. But as soon as this thy son was come, which hath devoured thy living with harlots, thou hast killed for him the fatted calf. And he said unto him, Son, thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. It was meant that we should make merry and be glad, for this thy brother was dead and is alive again and was lost and is found. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word and an understanding of his word to all who seek his mercy. And as a subject, I leave you with this message, R and R. Let us pray. Come, Father God. Come and speak to someone who is prodigal. Come and speak to someone who does not know the free pardon of sin through your son. Touch them, Father God, and open their heart that they may receive salvation through your son. I pray, dear Lord, that every ear would be attentive, every heart receptive. We bind any spirit of distraction as these your people come to hear the message. And I pray, Father God, if there's someone who has not received Jesus, that this might be the hour of salvation. We thank you. We love you. We praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. R&R. Many people think that R&R means rest and relaxation, but it's actually a military term. R&R means rest and recuperation. You see, soldiers were taken off the battlefield after extreme warfare. Many of them were shell-shocked from the constant bombing around them. Many of them, because they had been on the battlefield so long, had infectious diseases, uh, uh, dysentery, and they were, they were taken off the battlefield. Now, before I explain this message, I have to let you know, I have nothing new to add to this gospel. Everything that need be said has already been spoken. Everything that need be written has already been scribed. I, I could tell you of the saving power of this gospel, but Paul said it best. It is the power of God unto salvation. I, I could tell you about the great love of this gospel, but the beloved disciple John said it best. What manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. I could tell you how this gospel brings an eternal decision in the listener, but Elijah echoed it best from Mount Carmel. How long halt ye between two opinions, if the Lord be God, serve him. I can tell you about the transformative power of this gospel, but it was said so mightily from the ash heap when Job said, all the days of my appointed time, I will wait till my change comes. I could speak of the spirit of this gospel, but Jeremiah said it best, the Lord is like fire shut up in my bones and I can't hold my peace. I could speak to you about my faith in this gospel, but I'm humbled when I hear the words of the master. If you had the faith of a grain of a mustard seed, you could tell a mountain to be moved in church. I haven't seen any mountains go by. So I know that what little faith I have came from the master. And this day I say thank you. R&R, &R, rest and recuperation. Before we understand the text, we must first look at the pretext. To put the text in context, Jesus at Luke 14 was talking to the uh, sinners uh, 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 of Jerusalem, explaining to them the cost of being a disciple. Must Jesus bear the cross alone and all the world go free? No, there's a cross for everyone and there's a cross for you and me. He, he ex was explaining to them this great gift of salvation. And Ephesians 2 and 8 says that we are saved by grace through faith, not of works, lest any man should boast. But Christ says, I give you the gift, now I expect you to take up your cross. And, and, and Matthew 16 and 24 says that uh, 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 when we are to take up our cross and, and, and do the work of the master. Amen? And Luke 15, verse 2, it says that the Pharisees and scribes began to murmur as Jesus talked to the sinners of Jerusalem. The Pharisees and the scribes were the religious leaders of the time, uh, uh, the Jewish leaders of the nation. Can, can I be blunt? They were the church folk. 
And they were murmuring that Jesus would teach the sinners of Jerusalem. Now, let me say this. When, when folk murmur against you, murmuring is a way folk talk under their breath and, and speak loud enough for others to hear, but not loud enough for you to hear. And the reason why they don't want you to hear it is because they know Psalm 7, verse 10, my defense is of God who saves the upright in heart. When folks start talking about you, when folks set a trap for you, you don't have to defend yourself. All you've got to do is be upright in heart and and Christ will bring the defense for you. And as they question uh, 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 Jesus, uh, the Bible says that Jesus defended himself. Now, wait a minute, preacher. You said you don't have to defend yourself. No, I said my defense is of God. Jesus defended himself because he is God in the flesh. Amen. And his defense took the form of three parables. It makes up all of Luke 15, the, the parable of the lost sheep. A shepherd having 100 lost, 100 sheep loses one. He secures the 99 and then goes to find the one lost sheep. And when he finds that one lost sheep, he doesn't rebuke it. He doesn't chasten it. He puts that sheep on his shoulders and carries him back. Uh, it, it, the Bible says that the heavens rejoice at the return of one lost sinner. And then the parable of the silver coin. A maiden had 10 silver coins in, in her room and she lost one. She lit her room to find that one lost coin. That was the problem. She didn't have her light on. Amen. The Bible says that we are to let our light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify the Father which is in heaven. And when she turned her light on and found that one lost coin, she called her neighbors to come and celebrate with her that she had found the coin. Uh, see, heaven rejoices at the return of one lost sinner. And I believe what Jesus was saying uh, to the Jews is that God seeks lost sinners. That God is on a seek and save mission for those who do not know the free pardon of their sin through Jesus Christ. But there is a difference between these two parables and the parable of the prodigal son. In the parable of the prodigal son, the father did not seek the lost son. You see, the father was too holy to go down into the pig pen. And he was too righteous to compromise his values. But what he did was he waited for the return of his son. And I need to tell you before we start, that word prodigal, by the way, means wasteful. Are you saying this is the story of a wasteful son? No, I'm saying this is the story of two wasteful sons. One wasted his time in the pig pen and the other wasted his time even in his father's house. Now, before we go any further, I've got to let you know this is not an R to R story. This is not a rags to riches story. The young man was already rich. The young man already had access to all of his father's wealth and servanthood and, and all of his uh, father's uh, uh, money and finances. The real issue here was a subtle issue, but it was an issue of control. Who will rule and reign in the father's house was the real issue. And now let me tell you something about God. He is so gracious. Uh, Philippians 4 and 19 says that my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory. Uh, 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 that, now what the son, the son then says to his dad, give me the portion due me at your death. The son was asking for a portion that fell to him. Uh, that's a problem with a lot of our kids. They think stuff just falls to them. And we've got to teach them that you've got to go out and earn it for yourself. Nothing just falls to you. Now, now what the son asked, listen, it, it, it was legal, but it wasn't kosher. It was as if he was asking his father, give me the portion due me at your death. Even though you are not dead, though I wish you were dead, give it to me now. Now, no doubt the father was upset by his son's R and R, request and rebellion. But the word of God says that he gave both sons their portion of the estate. Parents, you know, there comes a time when you just got to let some kids go. When, when they're, they're taking and not giving. 
uh, when they won't find meaningful employment, when they, they, they zap all of your possessions, but they don't invest anything into the house. There comes a time when uh, you've got to let some kids go. Mothers, fathers, there comes a time when you've got to kick some kids out. When, when, when they're rebellious, when they're taking and giving, when, when, when they think that freedom is free. No, uh, freedom costs you. Amen. It, it, it costs you uh, for your parents to go to work and support you. Now, his motives become obvious. The Bible says that he hung around the house for a couple of days. He, he sat around and chit chatted. He didn't want to sound uh, 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 so bogus to ask for the money, grab it and leave. So he, he sits around and talks for a little while. But his motives become evident because the Bible says that after a few days, he gathered all together. In other words, I won't be back for nothing. And he didn't just move down the street or to a new, another neighborhood. The Bible says he moved to a far off land. And there the young prodigal began living R&R, &R, reckless and riotous, uh, belly to the bar, the, the life of the party, fair-weathered friends all around them. No doubt they were no longer drinking shorties and forties. They were drinking Covassier and, and, and Hennessy. No doubt they were no longer shopping at the Gap. Uh, uh, he took them to Saks Fifth Avenue and to Rodeo Drive. Uh, no longer eating uh, at McDonald's. They were eating uh, filet mignon. They were living large. But oh, 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 oh that, 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 the leeches that were around Prodigal began to drain him of his substance. And after a short season, Prodigal found out that he was in lack, that all of the money that he had received had suddenly dissipated. No doubt he knocked at the doors of some of his fair-weathered friends and asked for a loan, but no one would help him. The, the young man went from riches to rags. The, the young man was reduced to ruin. The young man went to his friends and was rejected and refused. Now, there, there is a subtle doctrine in this text, and it's vital to us even at this time. It is called the doctrine of Balaam. Balaam was a prophet for hire. Numbers 22 through 25 tells the story of Balaam. If you needed a nation cursed, if you needed a people cursed, if you needed a person cursed, you could call the prophet Balaam and he would curse them for money. He was a lover of filthy lucre. And when the Israelites came out of Egypt and defeated the, uh, uh, the uh, Canaanites at the walls of Jericho, there was a king who was down the road in Moab who said, oh my goodness, this nation is coming and we are next in line. This king's name was Balak. He was the king of the Moabites and he hires the prophet Balaam to curse the Israelites. And after three unsuccessful attempts, Balaam comes to King Balak and says, I cannot curse them. Why can't you curse them? Because God has blessed them. Listen closely. If God has blessed you, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. If God has blessed you, the gates of hell shall not prevail. If God has blessed you, you can set a ditch for me, but I'm going to walk around it because I'm blessed. I'm like a Timex watch. I've taken a licking, but I'm still ticking. Yes, yes, I'm blessed. I don't get it, but I got it. I'm blessed of God. I am highly favored. Say that to yourself. I am highly favored of God. Yes, yes, I'm blessed. And if you are blessed, the devil cannot curse you. But oh, listen closely. If you leave the blessed place, you will curse yourself. And Balak tells, Balaam tells King Balak, I cannot curse them. They are blessed of God. But what you do, King, is you invite them to your pagan rituals. You introduce them to your temple prostitutes. You pour forth your flagons of wine to them. You introduce them to your false religion, and maybe you can get them out of the blessed place, and they will curse themselves. 
And see, that's what happened to prodigal. Sin began to claim its wages. The young man wanted freedom, but sin made him a slave. The young man wanted success, but sin made him a failure. The young man wanted to live high on the hog, but he found himself in a pig pen. Listen, when you sign a contract with sin, you better read the fine print. The wages of sin is death. Rest in peace. My neighbor John always had the greenest lawn in town. And whatever John did, I did trying to copy him to get my lawn as pretty as John's. John went and got the Kim Lawn Man. I got the Kim Lawn Man. John went and got himself a, 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 some Scots, and I got myself some Scots. John was even out there one day picking dandelions with a screwdriver. My wife said, what is he doing? I said, do you know that man is out there picking dandelions with a screwdriver? Where's my toolbox at? And I tried to keep up with John, and I never understood why his grass was always greener than mine. And one day, John called me across the yard, and I thought, well, he just wants to brag on his green grass. So I went across, and I walked across my grass to John's grass. And as I walked on John's grass, I began to look down at his grass. And to my surprise, I found he had potholes. And to my surprise, there were dandelions in his grass. To my surprise, there were even spots where no grass grew at all. And, and the reason why I could not see it is because I was looking from an earthly view. Do y'all hear me? But oh, once I walked across and got on his grass and looked from an eternal view, I saw that he was no better off than me. That's why it doesn't pay to look at another person's stuff, because you don't know what they went through to get that stuff. That's why it doesn't pay to be envious of anybody else, because whatever you've got, there's a cost to get it, and there's a cost to keep it. I'm grateful for what God has given me. Oh, I will bless the Lord at all times, in goodness, in plenty, and in lack. I thank God for what he has done for me right now. Amen? See, you may think the grass is greener on the other side, but once you get a, 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 a heavenly view, you may find out that you're doing all right. Amen? Amen. Hmm. And here, prodigal finds himself penniless. And he goes and hires himself out to fend in a pig farm. If you understand how low he had went, it's that you understand that Jews had nothing to do with pigs. He had gone so low that even while slopping the hogs, he said, I wish I could have the food that even the hog is eating. But something did not fit his spirit. And somebody is listening today, and, and their spirit is troubled, and I'll explain to you why. 2 Peter 2 and 22 says, The dog is turned to his own vomit again, and the sow that has been washed to his wallowing in the mire. See, you can clean a pig up. You can put a Bible in his hand. You can put him right on the front pew. But a pig does not enjoy church. A pig enjoys the mud. But oh, if you're a child of God, you may go in the mud for a little while. You may even enjoy it for a little while, but it won't stick with you. Why? Because you are not a pig. You are a child of God. And the Bible says when he came to himself, he had a, 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 a moment, an epiphany of reason. He says, do not the servants at my father's house eat better than I do. I will go back to my father's house and I will tell my father, I'm not worthy to be your son, but oh, just make me a servant so that I could come back in the house. And he begins his journey back to his father's house. No doubt as he walked, he had a case of R&R. &R. He recited and rehearsed his apology to his father. But the Bible says that when he entered his father's land. The father was waiting on him. Amen? Amen? 
And he ran to his father and said, Father, I'm no longer worthy to be your son. He, he came and fell on his knees with regret and remorse. And he repented and remembered. But his father recognized him, ran to him and said, I'm not trying to hear that. You are my son. Bring forth the fatted calf. Bring forth the robe of righteousness. Bring forth the princely shoes. My son was lost, but now is found, was dead, and now is alive. God rejoices at those who come back into the fold. God rejoices at a lost soul who comes to Jesus. Now you remember <clears throat> the Pharisees and scribes who murmured against Jesus at the beginning of Luke chapter 15. Well, Jesus does not forget them. He continues, and he talks about the eldest son. Now listen closely, beloved. There are sins of the flesh, and there are sins of the heart. The sins of the flesh were evident with the younger son. But the sins of the heart were not so evident with the eldest son. After all, he was in the father's house. He worked for the father, never asked anything from the father. And it seems that he would have been in good stead, but he was also prodigal, wasteful. He wasted his time in his father's house. And the father comes out, the same father who waited on the youngest son, comes out to entreat the eldest son and says, son, wh why don't you come inside? And the eldest son had a case of R&R. &R. He ridiculed and rejected his younger brother. He was resentful and refused to come inside. He told his father, I've lived a respectful and righteous life, and never once did you offer me a calf. He said he had been reliable and remained at the house. Listen closely, like the Pharisees in this parable, he was self-righteous and judgmental. Now, before you pick the toothpick out of your neighbor's eye, get the railroad tie out of your own eye. Amen? One sister comes into the sanctuary pregnant and unmarried. Another comes in with a pocket book full of contraceptives, same sin. One sister comes in lying and another comes in gossiping, same sin. One brother comes in torn down and another comes in tearing down. It's the same sin. See, we have to remember that the Father deals in grace. Amen? Amen? He does not deal in works. And we are sons of God, not by our works, but by the righteousness of our elder brother. His name is Jesus, my rock and my refuge, R&R. &R. His name is Jesus, the rose of Sharon and root of David. He made himself of no reputation and reclothed his glory in flesh, R&R. &R. He came to earth as a ransom and reconciliation for our sins. Rejected and ridiculed by man, he hung on Calvary's cross to the earth, reeled and rocked like a drunken man. But did you hear the good news early Sunday morning? He got up with all power in his hand. He, we rejoice in his return. If you're at rock bottom, he'll rescue you. If you're in rags, he'll reclothe you. If you've been rejected, he'll receive you. If you've been refused, he'll replenish you. Rejoice in the Lord, beloved. We are soldiers in God's army. We've got to fight. And Lord, listen, though the bombs are flying, though the pandemic rages, stay on. On the battlefield. There's coming a time of R&R. &R. Stay on the battlefield. There's coming a time when righteousness shall reign. Stay on the battlefield. There's coming a time when we shall see the rose of Sharon and the root of David. Stay on the battlefield. R&R. &R. Rejected and ridiculed by man. He hung on that cross to the earth, reeled and rocked what someone said early Sunday morning. He reappeared in his radiance. He restored man's righteousness. What a mighty, mighty God we serve. 
I have nothing new to add to this gospel other than my story. I don't know about you, but I'm prodigal. And I'm so glad the Father was waiting on me. Before we give the information, I want to give you the picture of the week. And the picture of the week comes by way of Rembrandt. It is called The Return of the Prodigal Son. It is a picture of a father meeting prodigal, smelling of pig and swine, meeting him as he comes home. And there he is on bended knees. And the thing that is striking about Rembrandt's picture, look at it closely and see those hands that the father gently puts on his son's shoulders, hands of grace and mercy. And if you look closer to the right, you will see a man standing with his head bowed and his eyes closed. Perhaps he had a prodigal son as well and empathized and sympathized with what the father was going through. And if you look even closer, you'll see a man sitting down, sitting in the seat of the scornful, wondering how this father could abide in a man who had wasted his substance and now came back penniless and stinking of hogs. But I love what the Bible says, where sin did abound. Grace did much more about And if you look even closer in this picture, in the back, in the shadows, you will see a mother waiting to hug her prodigal son and tell him, welcome back home. And we wish to do that to somebody today. If you have not received the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal savior, we simply ask that this day you open your heart to receive him and repeat this prayer with me. Father God, I am prodigal. I have been lost for many years, but I'm found now. I believe that your son died for my sins. I believe that when he rose, he verified his sacrifice to mankind. I will serve him, Father, all the days of my life. And I thank you for so sweet salvation. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 And we hope you have been blessed. If you have received the Lord this day, give us a, give us a call. Uh, you can reach us by way of uh, our webpage. There is information, a contact uh, uh, site where you can speak to us. We would love to hear from you. We'd love to pray for you. We'd love to give you some literature, and we would just love to link up with you as brothers and sisters in Christ. Hope you've been blessed today. Be safe. Be smart. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord lift his face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious unto you, and may he grant you peace. And God's children said, Amen. Amen. Amen.